I would say anytime you hear that there's a labor shortage in the construction industry that uh, good help is hard to find, I say bullcrap to all that. Um, I think there's not enough good construction companies out there and social media is exposing those crappy companies that want to exploit their workers and care more about profit over people. And that's where the real problem with construction is. It's not that there's a shortage of caring, hardworking, dedicated, disciplined people that want to impact the world in positive ways. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammond. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? People over profits. Do you realize that that is the formula for growing your business? A lot of people think it's the other way around. They, they think about the measuring the profits, measuring you know service factors and all of these things that go into why, how we make money. And I g- totally get that. But what if you thought about putting people first? And what if you actually put people first? And what if you actually created a culture where they knew and they felt cared for, heard, seen, valued? That's what we're talking about. That changes the dynamics of the entire business, and that changes the trajectory of growth. That's a tough word to say. But I bring this to you because I'm really excited to share this episode with you. I have Josh Levin, the founder of Empowered Electric. They were number 210 on the Inc. list in 2019. They've grown at an astronomical pace, almost 2,000% in three years. They've done a little over $8 million in revenue, and they're continuing to grow because they put people first. What I love about this is we talk about some specific strategies that you could use, and, and it's coming from an industry like construction that this is unheard of, and that's one reason why they're growing so fast, because they put people over profits. Well, here's the interview with Josh. Josh, how are you? Doing well. Doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, excited to have you here at Growth Think Tank. I wanted to let you have a chance to talk about the company to give some context to uh, to the audience. So tell us about Empowered Electric. So Empowered Electric is a full service commercial electric company. Uh, we dabble in residential and service, but predominantly what we do is we light up or bring power to all the, spi- all the spaces that you would go on a date night to. So restaurants, coffee shops, bars, high hospitality locations, hotels. Um, if, if you've gone on a date there, it's probably been touched by us in Kansas City. Um, started five years ago, I've grown to $10 million in revenue this year and, uh, roughly 50 employees. So it's, it's gone well. Well, you were one of the fastest growing companies in the Inc list. Do you remember your number exactly? Uh, number 210. 210. I mean, that's, that's an impressive number to do this. And you've been only in business a short amount of time and you're young. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, older, older than some, I guess. Um, <laughs> others. But yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It was really fun. Um, I think we were number four fastest growing in Kansas city, which was a really fun honor. Um, third in Missouri because Kansas city, most people, when they think Kansas city, they think Kansas, uh, the wizard of Oz, but Kansas city, Missouri is actually three times the size of Kansas city, Kansas. So we're on the Missouri side and it's been, it's been a great honor. Well, I want to dive into this because one of the things that have really driven your company to the level of millions in revenue and fast growth has not been a maniacal focus on money and profits. So what did you focus on to create this kind of growth? Um, Well, so I had worked at a a previous electric company and I'd been in the construction industry for a long time, um, basically my entire adult life. And if you think about it, when you think about construction, you don't think about loving, caring individuals. I mean, you're, you you might be like politically correct and be like, no, 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 I, I do. Usually when people think about construction, they think of, you know, a dead end job, someone that probably dropped out of high school, someone that doesn't have a lot of things going for them. Um, you think about maybe topics of Ill- illegal immigration. It's not an industry that's known for loving and caring for its people, for social impact, social good, those types of things. And so as I worked at a company that kind of, um, I saw a lot of that same similar construction stuff happen, I thought to myself, I wonder if you could start a company that cared more about people and less about profit in this industry and would it work? 
And so when I jumped out, and there were a lot of things leading up to that, but when I jumped out, I, I always say it was almost like a science experiment of like, if I cared more about people and less about profit in the construction world, could I be successful? Um, and so I, I, I had no desire or no goal to be on the Inc. 500 list. It was literally either it's going to work or it's not. And I'll know. And uh, I think, you know, on this podcast, we, we figure out it does work. Well, that was in the early days. Like that, you didn't learn that over time. You came into this with this premise of, can I create something totally different than the norm in this industry, which is putting people first? that would, would it be viable? Mm -hmm. That's where you started. Yeah. Yeah. It really started there. And you know, that whole Simon Sinek start with why thing. I think the reason that some people talk about culture, they talk about caring for people and it's, if you're more about people and less about profit, could I make a lot of profit? Like the end goal is still profitability and money for most people. And that's the strategy. So like, you know, you hear, hear, hear Gary Vee say like, if your company culture strategy is just a foosball table, you suck. You actually have to care about people. And for me, um, and we don't have to get into it, but I came from a pretty rough past um, that was very characterized by poverty, addiction, and self-defeat. So fill in those words, go watch Goodwill Hunting, and you get a snapshot of my life. And because of that, I was able to volunteer at this juvenile detention center. And I would see these kids ages 12 to 17 years old, uh, some boys, some girls, and I would talk to them about their past not dictating their future. And I would get them all fired up to, to leave the juvenile detention center and re-engage in the world and have a great social impact and change their lives and change the narrative. But when they would get out and I would meet them at coffee shops because I love coffee. Um, right here, man, I gotta, gotta drink, I'm a coffee addict. When I would meet with them at a coffee shop, nine times out of 10, their biggest fear wasn't running drugs and asking a girl to the prom and all this kind of stuff. It was finding a job. Because if they didn't find a job, the recidivism rate is astronomical. If, if whether it's a juvenile detention center or later uh, convictions, if they don't find meaningful work, they're going to resort to what they know. And it was kind of that that I was like, man, if I cared more about people and less about profit in a real way, I'm thinking about, you know, Marquell, I'm thinking about John, I'm thinking about Josh, I'm thinking about these kids' faces. If I cared more about them, could it be pro you know, could it work? Could it be successful? It wasn't this like idea of me just like saying these words um, to like, you, you know, you, does it make sense? It does. I mean, I, I want to zero in on something because a lot of people listening in here go, you know, I do care about my people, but how far do you take it to truly care about the people that work for you? Uh, I think all the way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you care all the way because this. I was thinking about this when people say, because I mean, I've been burned a lot, um, and we're not a halfway house. We're not a reengagement program. Like we are a 100% commercial electric company. But for every five awesome dudes we hire, do we hire someone that has maybe a checkered past? Maybe someone that needs someone to believe in them? Absolutely. But we always have this overwhelming ratio and dedication to our customers and our clients that their house isn't going to burn down, right? <laughs> um, that the lights are going to work. Um, but I think one of the main reasons that you have to care all the way. So we've done things like we've laid people, not laid people off. I'm sorry. We've suspended people for poor performance or poor punctuality with pay. Um, we've given severance pay to electricians. I've never heard of a construction worker getting fired and getting severance pay. Um, we've paid for counseling sessions. We've paid for hospital visits. We've paid for um, time off that they didn't deserve. Like we've gone to overwhelming extents to show these people that we care deeply about them as human beings, as individuals, not just as numbers on a, on a profit and loss statement. And what it's done for us is, is two things. Even if the person didn't work out and they got fired, what it's done is it's made me a better person. It's made me a better leader. Because I think I need to be the kind of leader that cares no matter what. Now, if they don't respond well, they're going to get fired. That's, that's irregardless, whatever. But the, the kind of heart that I have, there's been times where I'm, I'll tell my wife, I'm like, man, I could, I could really see how not caring would be so much easier. And she's like, yeah, but you don't want to be an easy person. You want to be a strong person. Don't take the easy way out. And the second thing it does is it enforces our culture so that people know whenever I say we care more about people and less about profit. They're thinking about those crappy electricians that got fired 
with three weeks paid vacation, you know, like severance pay or whatever it was, they think about those people that we sent to counseling. Those th they think about those people and they know that it's not just a cliche word that we're saying and they can get behind what we're, what we're, what we're preaching, you know? I would bet that you have no problem with employee retention. We, we've had a great retention. We've had, I mean, so that's, that's what's funny. And this is a completely different topic, but I would, I would say anytime you hear that there's a labor shortage in the construction industry, that uh, good help is hard to find. I say bull crap to all that. Um, I think there's not enough good construction companies out there and social media is exposing those crappy companies that want to exploit their workers and care more about profit over people. And that's where the real problem with construction is. It's not that there's a shortage of caring, hardworking, dedicated, disciplined people that want to impact the world in positive ways. I mean, what better thing to do than build, like we get to build schools and hospitals. Like you want to impact the world in a great way. Like we're building those things like millennials, generation Z, they want to get on board with that, but they don't want to do it so that you can buy your 15th lake house while they're driving a 1995 Honda Civic, you know? So anyways, let's pause here for a second. Josh talked about caring and he's talked a lot about caring, but a lot of people don't have the courage to truly care for their people. And when I say truly care, I mean truly getting to know them at a personal level. You, there's this, uh, some kind of thing of thinking about the business where you're just gonna stay business and we're gonna talk about business, but people want to feel appreciated. They want to feel heard. They want to feel valued. And that really takes them caring. And it takes you taking the time to do that. So make sure that you're taking the time as you need to, to make your people feel cared for. Now back to the interview. Well, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper with this because, um, you know, it's those, those benefits that you mentioned, and, and there's much more than just those regular benefits. What else do you do to truly let people know how much you put them on a higher level than profits? Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the thing is like, once again, I, I like, I'm not trying to juke this question, but it's like, I think it's more about who you are. You know what I mean? It's like, imagine uh, if you're married, it's like, well, what do you want to do to like show your wife you love her um, or, or your spouse? It's like, well, clean the kitchen and pick up and don't take a nap. Um, and you know, do anything and it's going to be impactful to people. Um, and so we use language, but we also just, it's who we are. So we text our guys, we know our people's, people's names, their spouses' names, their kids' names. We know their hobbies. We ask about them as people. Um, we engage with them. If we go to a job site, we bring Red Bulls. Like, you know, we just, any kind of effort matters. Cause I think that's what people want is they want to be seen. They want to be known. So see your people and know them. So what do we do? Do we throw parties every month? Sometimes, sometimes we don't. Do we buy pizza? Sometimes, sometimes we don't. Like, I don't think tactics matter as much as intent. And if you care about your people, show them. I mean, I, I was just at a seminar where they were talking about like this new communication software to, in, uh, in, to create like employee engagement. And I was like, dude, really what you're describing is a group text message. Like, and that's free. Why don't you group text all your guys and say like, yo, dude, did you see the Chiefs game? That sucks. We lost. Like, you know, what I mean? like you don't need some app for $10,000 to send a group text, you know? It's, yeah. So I think that's what more we do. And I mean, we, we have lofty goals. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I would love a company lake house. I mean, thinking big picture, dude, this is going to sound goofy, but like I want a company lake house where when after you're here for a year, you get a four day complete, you know, paid vacation to the lake house, boats filled, fridges stocked. Cause in the construction industry, you know, people do live somewhat paycheck to paycheck. Like, um, you know, they, they, they may, maybe don't think they can afford a really lavish extreme vacation. And I would love to be able to give that to our guys. So I, I want to share some research with you because uh, I've been thinking of a better way to, to phrase this. And, and I want to kind of test it out with you. I talk to probably 450 right now because every conversation I have like you adds to the number. But after 450 conversations, about five out of 10 people would answer that it's more important to put their people first over their customers. Mm. And, and the reason I say five out of 10, because five out of 10 would say it's a really close decision 
but it has to be people over customers. Now, four out of 10 would adamantly, I think you're probably on the side with your adamantly, you've got to put your people first. Would you agree that you're in that four out of 10? Um, that's interesting you say that because I, <laughs> I feel like it's, well, the reason I say it's interesting is I think like whenever, so whenever I say, what if we cared more about people and less about profit? What I'm not saying is, what if I cared more about my employees than profit? So I actually kind of ventured out further to say, what if we would care about our employees? What if we would care about each other? What if we cared about our um, community and our customers more than profit? So okay. I have not separated our customers from our people um, almost in any category of anything I've said up to this point. And I think there's sometimes, so I, I, I think it would have to be 50, 50. I know that's going to sound weird, but I think sometimes it's where you come down, but I will tell you nine out of 10 mm -hmm. of all the conversations I've had, will pick employee first. Yeah. No, and, it makes sense. And it's really because it's, I'm asking the question as a leader, what's more important, mm -hmm. but as a company, You've got to put that customer first. You've got to make that customer customer centric, but employees that don't feel taken care of, it's really hard to do that. Would you agree? Yeah, no, you're, you're 100 percent right. So I do I would adamantly agree. I remember hearing about the Pony Express where the founder of the Pony Express said, "Hey, what's more important, the ponies or the mail?" And everyone said the mail, and he said, "Absolutely not, it's the ponies because if the ponies aren't taken care of, the mail isn't delivered." I guess where I was going is, um, I care massively about my employees, but sometimes I need to kick in the pants and say, "Hey, dude, you know, you can't be a jerk to the customer. You can't, you know, like if the customer asks for an extra plug, come on." You know, I, I totally get that you have to have those direct moments, but that's for them yeah. to learn and see a perspective, right? Yeah. And to yeah, see you know, you know that, that that's uh, no. Actually, I, I have a story about that. So I uh, we there's a company. Oh, one way that we show our uh, people appreciation is we always kind of outreach to their families and their spouses. That's why I said we know our spouse, our people's spouses' name and kids. And like at our company Christmas party, we like decked out our spouses in nickel and suede. Uh, um, apparel. So Nickel and Suede is a local Kansas City company, close friends with them. They, they made the ink uh, list for the second year in a row. Amazing people. And we like bottle their spouses, these teardrop leather earrings. But anyways, we're doing their new store and it's like very beautiful, very swanky, you know, just an amazing store. And um, one of our guys had some uh, less than appealing bumper stickers all over their vehicle. Um, just kind of goofy, right? Young kid. And it kind of really ticked off our customer. And I had this conversation with him and he's an amazing electrician. He's a young kid. He's super ambitious. He's catching on everything. And we kind of got onto him and he felt really, really bad. And I said, Hey, his name's Dakota. And I said, Hey, Dakota, I want you to realize this. The reason that we're getting onto you isn't because the bumper st stickers are vulgar or anything like that. It's we see you as a massive part of this company's growth. We see you as a future leader. And you need to realize now that there's a lot of eyes on you because of how skilled you are, because of how you know, great you are with communication. Like you're going places. And as you go places, people are going to look to tear you down. Start thinking about that. And it was a great teaching moment rather than just like writing them up and saying, hey, you can't have this kind of stuff on our company's job sites. It was this moment to like empower him and say, do we see you up here? you know, rise up to that occasion. Now you mentioned empower. What role does that play in the growth of your company? Empowering your employees to, to really think for themselves, you know, do the work, take care of their customers. How do you do that? Yeah. So whenever we started, I talked about that juvenile detention center and all credit to my wife. I was thinking about all these like goofy names, like break the cycle electric, which if you break the cycle of electricity, it doesn't work. So it's a stupid name. Um, my wife pointed that out very, very passionately. Um, and this, this theme of empowering people came up. And originally it was, you know, we wanted to empower um, at-risk young adults to break the cycle of poverty, addiction, and self-defeat by learning kick-ass electric work. Um, and it kind of morphed into we wanted to empower people through electric opportunity. Um, that's a more PG uh, business sounding statement and empowered people. I think, you know, it's kind of been in all our culture that people feel the most empowered when they feel educated. Most construction companies, the biggest complaint of workers is, I wish our company trained us more. Okay, so we're gonna make education extremely important. When we were a company of four people, we enlisted two of our guys into a, a national apprenticeship program. 
And I remember the schooling kind of laughed at us and said like, Hey, we've never enrolled 50% of a company. And I said, are we going to let our size dictate their potential? Like we're not going to always be a four person company. So we need to start teaching them. You know, I think one of the other things about empowered people is they feel safe. And so we're always very proactive on letting people know where they stand in the company, both good or bad, you know, having tough conversations of, Hey, if this continues, you know, you're, you're going to get suspended. If you get suspended multiple times, you're going to get fired. You know, having those tough conversations that are very unpleasant rather than just writing them off. Um, it's been a, a big theme for us, you know, empowered people, um, see the potential. And so we kind of always are casting vision on where we're going as a company and how they play a part in it. And so these kind of, all these kinds of themes are something that we try to hit on people all the time. Um, security, you know, having multiple, you know, another complaint about construction companies is, man, I haven't had a raise in two years or I, I, every raise I've got, I've had to ask for. And, for the most part, we've never had someone ask for a raise because twice a year we sit down with them for 30 minutes up to two hours and go over these things and we've never missed an evaluation. And we just kind of carve out these themes that people know what to expect. They know who me and my business partner, Paul, are as individuals and as leaders and as bosses. And people get behind that. They get behind that hard. Hold on. Josh has talked about Empowered. Now he's got a t-shirt on that talks about Empowered Electric empowerment is a big part of why his company is growing so fast. You've got to trust your employees. A lot of people think that they're not micromanagers. So it, let's assume that you're not a micromanager, but are you empowering them? Are you trusting them enough to be able to figure out their own path for the process? Are you giving them the tools? Are you allowing them to invest money in themselves and training? Empowerment comes in many different flavors, but when you empower your people, they will learn to think for themselves. They will learn to operate, make great decisions for the company, and you will have a better company because of it. Empowerment is one of the big factors that go into a growing company, but it's also a big factor into an increased feeling of ownership. It's a big part of my work, and I'd love to share that with you today. And back to the interview with Josh. Well, Josh, I want to wrap this up a little bit because I'm, I'm impressed with the company. I'm impressed with the way you think, but you went into this not knowing it. You, I think the words you said, this is a, a, a kind of a science experiment. Yeah. And it took courage to do that. What would you tell other leaders that would like to maybe shift their culture to put people over profit right now? Um, so like I said, man, I've, I mean, I, I make more money than I ever thought imaginable. And that happened about, I started making more money than I ever dreamed I would make 10 years ago before Empowered Electric started. Whenever I interviewed to be a journeyman electrician, I remember sitting at the table where the guy told me, hey, as a journeyman electrician in four years, if you go through the apprenticeship program, you get licensed, you'll make 25 bucks an hour. And I thought $52,000 a year. Oh my gosh, dude, I'm, I'm rich. Like that's going to be more money than I ever imagined. And so ever since then, I've been, I feel like I've been playing with house money. Um, you can have cars, you can have houses, you can have whatever you want, but having the ability to impact people in real ways. So literally last week on Thursday, a kid, um, 20 year old kid, I say kid, he's, you know, young adult. Sorry if that's me dinging. Um, don't know how to turn that off. Um, he came in and he said, he kind of had that look in his eye and he's like, Hey, I need to talk to you. And I was like, man, I think this guy's going to put in his two week notice Maybe he got offered a job for $2 more an hour. Like maybe something happened. And so I, I went out to the warehouse and, and I, he's like, Hey man, I just, dude, I, you know, I, I know this is my job. I know I clock in seven to three 30. I know, you know, honestly, man, I'm just putting in plugs and lights and stuff like that. But dude, I just got to say, and it's super awkward for me to say, and you know, I, I'm kind of building it up. Like I'm like, what, come on, spit it out. And he's like, this company's changed my life. He's like, every time I walk into this office and I see you and Paul, it's just like you and Paul and Nathaniel. I think to myself, those are the guys I want to be. Those are the guys I want to be like. And I just want to say thank you. And it was just this, dude, this is amazing. Like that's better than any bonus check ever. Like it, it, it's, it's phenomenal to know that you're impacting people's lives in real tangible ways. And, you know, that's a positive experience. But, you know, I, I shared about those Juvie Hall kids. We had one Juvie Hall kid that, you know, got out, was doing the right things. We hired him and he worked for us for a year and started acting stupid and started breaking my heart and it didn't go well. And we ended up firing him. And it was the hardest thing. Literally this, this, this firing this kid was the hardest thing. The pinnacle of like caring isn't worth it. This sucks. 
Well, we fired him and like six months later, he gave me a call. And I'm like, oh crap, you know, he's probably on drugs. He probably needs money. I, I'm thinking the worst. And he answers, and I answer the phone and he's like, yo, Josh, it's Mark Well. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's like, hey, man, I just want to say, I'm sorry for being a shithead. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah, dude. He's like, whenever you guys fired me, I realized I just wasted the best, the best opportunity I'd ever been given in my life. And I immediately went out and applied at every electric company I could possibly find. He said, I got on with this company. He said, Josh, I never left my neighborhood. I've been to six states. I'm going all across America and I'm killing it. And I just want to say thank you for believing in me. And it was just like, you know, this heart wrenching situation. But man, I, I promise you, I don't give a crap how cool of a job or I don't even care. That story is better than Inc. Magazine's number 210. Um, knowing that Mark Wells out there killing it and is on the right situation. You know what I mean? I'm with you because I, I can see it in your heart. And this is what makes great companies great is when you, you, you're able to put your heart out there and mm -hmm. you've shown us um, what you stand for and what the company stands for. So uh, much success to you going forward. And if you keep this up, you know, I really can't see how this changes anything um, from a downside. It's no longer an experiment. This is the way you operate. Is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for being here at Grow Think Tank. Really appreciate your, your wisdom and insight. Awesome. Thanks a ton. Fantastic. Love this whole conversation, everything about it. I love his energy and his soul as a leader. So I love to be able to bring to you interviews just like this to tell the story of the science experiment of would this company work in this industry and telling you the story about how it's turned out and good news. It turned out really well for not only for Josh, but also for every employee that's in the whole um, touching his company, the, the families involved because they feel cared for and they have no problem with the retention. They're continuing to grow all because they put people over profits. Well, my name is Gene Hammett. I'm the host here at Growth Think Tank, and I'm really excited to have you as a member listening in here. Make sure you keep tuning in, keep listening to these great stories. If you can think of one person to share it with, I'd love to grow the audience just by you mentioning this show to them. So go to growthinktank.com. As always, leave with courage. We'll see you next time.